could that be? I don't know. Excuse me. We wish you Paul von Hartmann. Wen darf ich melden? Gestapo. This is a scene from the motion picture, The Cardinal, being produced and directed by Otto Preminger. The action isn't quite to his liking, so here goes. Take two. The secret of these multiple suicides, an elaborate scaffolding erected just below the window. This is a behind-the-scenes view of a major motion picture the manufacturing of illusion on a grand scale. This is the anatomy of a movie. In the morning of December 11, 1963, Boston newsmen pay homage to Hollywood royalty. Their arrival heralds the world premiere of a major motion picture, The Cardinal. This day is a milestone in the colorful career of producer-director Otto Preminger. He has been responsible for such varied films as Laura, The Moon is Blue, Carmen Jones, Man with a Golden Arm, and Exodus. And now Preminger launches The Cardinal. At 11.15, a meeting with Boston's mayor, John F. Collins, begins a day-long series of publicity rituals. At 12, a speech to the Rotary Club. At 2 o'clock, a press conference with high school journalists. Within a few hours, The Cardinal will be shown publicly for the first time. It has involved the talents of hundreds of men and women. And for nearly three years, the Cardinal has been the sole responsibility, the brainchild of Otto Preminger. Though it takes many people working together to make a picture, it must, I feel, be essentially the product of one man's vision, one man's initiative, one man's conviction. It is his responsibility to get the others to share his understanding and his enthusiasm. I am sometimes called a tough director, but I am not really. My methods change with the needs of a scene, with the personality of the actor. For example, if an actor is basically a nice guy and has to play a role calling for toughness, I may use toughness to work him up. If I am tough to someone, their natural reaction is to become stronger and tougher themselves. But I must know my actor, know how much he can take. The production of the Cardinal took us to Europe and among many other places to the beautiful valley of the Danube. I remember visiting here for the first time with my parents on a warm weekend in spring when I was just seven years old. About 40 miles from Vienna is the old Dürnstein Monastery. But for me, Vienna has two kinds of images. One, peaceful, civilized, cultured. <laughs> the other violent and cruel. In 1938, Hitler came to Vienna. The Cardinal is a story of man's struggle against intolerance, a conflict which occurs in many parts of the world and takes many forms. Come on, This theme is what first drew me to the book. This is why I made the film. 
For the lead role of Stephen Fermoil, I chose Tom Tryon. Fermoil in the story is a young American who rises to the eminence of Cardinal in the Catholic Church. The role spans over 25 years, so it had to be played by a young man who could be aged by makeup. The part called for sincerity, warmth, dignity, humor. Tom Tryon was a relatively unknown actor, but in my opinion, he had these qualities, and after exhaustive tests, I was convinced that he would rise to the demands of the part. In reading the script, I found the character of Stephen Fermoil someone I automatically had great empathy for. I just kind of fell into the role. The most important thing I felt was to keep the character as strong and as simple as possible. The more or less Catholic aspects of the part were not as essential as my understanding of the man. Tryon happens to be a Protestant, but it was not difficult for him to feel the part of a Catholic priest. He and the other actors became experts in the ancient ceremonies, the intricate rituals of the church, such as the ordination into priesthood. Wherever we film, the church of Casamari near Rome, the Basilica Santa Maria Sopra Minerva in Rome, St. Stephen's Cathedral in Vienna, St. John's in Stamford, Connecticut. The clergy stood by as technical advisors. They even appeared as supporting actors to give the ritual scenes authenticity. The Cameron on the Cardinal is Leon Shamroy, three-time Academy Award winner. As director of photography, he is in charge of the visual tools of movie making, lights and camera. The director conceives the action and mood. Shamroy must capture them on film. I like Otto. We've worked together many times and we know each other very well. That's important because a director and a cameraman are together all the time on a picture. They have to be in tune. We usually agree about things. If we don't, we discuss it. In any case, what he finally decides, I tried to give him because in a production, only one man, the director, can be in charge. A big challenge to me in the Cardinal were the many churches we worked in. The huge places soaked up light like blotters. Then there was the physical problem of hauling our equipment from one location to another. The boys on my crew worked 22 hours a day, seven days a week, day and night, in all kinds of weather. When there isn't room for the camera, you make room. Otto wanted everything authentic, and this old Boston house was ideal. However, it required slight alterations for my purposes. Later, we put the wall back to keep the owners happy. The story of the Cardinal begins in this house, carefully furnished to reflect the taste of an average Irish family in the Boston of 1917. For the part of Tryon's mother, Preminger calls Dorothy Gish out of semi-retirement. Her last movie role, 17 years before, was also for Otto Preminger. Clever casting is a Preminger trademark. He has the ability to detect unrealized qualities in his actors. When I cast Carolyn in the role of Mona, Fermoil's young sister, I made her change her blonde hair into black. The combination of dark hair, fair complexion and blue eyes gave her a distinct Irish appearance. She also played her own daughter in the picture as a redhead. Besides revealing her beauty in a fresh and striking way, I think the hair changes helped Carol in achieving her characterizations. In the picture, Carol Lindley plays Tryon's sensitive young sister, a demanding and highly emotional role. As the tragic Mona, she is torn between loyalty to her Catholic family and her love for a Jewish boy. I want to marry him. Has he asked you? Yes. I asked him to wait. He won't wait forever. The difference in faith, it doesn't matter. It's easier to make a part believable to yourself when you play the scenes in a real home or a real church. There is an atmosphere of authenticity. But sometimes the hardest thing to do is to find a quiet moment to get into the mood of the scene. 
Everyone rushes around trying to get ready all at once, and well, this is especially true of a location which is available only part of the time. Otto would insist that I concentrate no matter what, that I think of my part and nothing else. This, perhaps, is the most important thing that I learned to do on the picture. On her brother again, this time in his professional capacity as priest. Her confession in this pivotal scene will force him to confront the full and fateful responsibility of his belief and his office. Penny says let's leave all religion out of it and get married by a judge. But that wouldn't be a marriage. You'd be living in mortal sin. What else can I do? Why do you think I came here, Steve? I want you to tell me what to do. Hard as it may be, you must give him up. In Boston, on-location realism is carried to an uncomfortable extreme. During the worst cold spell in the city's history, exterior scenes have to be filmed, despite frozen fingers and cameras which refuse to roll. One consolation, the steaming breath of the actors gives a gratifying touch of reality. To help sustain the director, there is a kiss from actress Romy Schneider, who chose this particular day to arrive from Europe. I was born in a cold country where it can be cold in December or February or not. After 10 minutes, I asked myself how the actors can speak because you couldn't move anymore. The face, everything was blue. I never had so cold in my life. Romy's part in The Cardinal is vitally important to her career. A popular star in Europe, this is her first appearance in an American film. She has come all this way just to meet her fellow actors and to discuss a role with Preminger. During this visit, she will also plan her wardrobe with Mrs. Preminger, who is costume coordinator on the production. Weeks from now, Romy will go before the cameras, playing the part of Anna Marie, a girl who meets Stephen in Vienna, where he is temporarily on leave from his church duties. Unaware at first that he is a priest, Anna Marie has fallen in love with Stephen Fermoil. And now, at this crucial moment, she challenges his vocation and his faith. Are you Janet? I'm a priest, Anna Marie, but I'm also a man. Men can show their feelings, but a priest has to learn how to hide them. I can't hide them anymore. I think I'm in love with you. I know I'm in love with you. I cannot ask you to kiss me while you're still married to the church. But in Vienna, even for a married man, it is a sin not to dance a waltz. I think there is more in you than being a mere parish priest. The truth. Of course I do. Ha! Ah. You wanted the truth, Your Eminence. Ambition is a disease in any man. And a priest it can be fatal. At your age, it may still be curable. In the storm, the character of young Stephen Fermoil. Not the least of these is the outspoken Cardinal Glennon. I mean, I couldn't find the right actor to play Cardinal Glennon of Boston in the picture. I thought of my old friend John Houston, because who would be better suited to play a Cardinal than a motion picture director? And the character of Cardinal Glennon, whom Houston plays, is very original, very unpredictable, very much like Houston in real life. 
I think that uh, Otto perceived certain qualities in me and that this was rather typecasting. And I've always admired Cardinal's robes and uh, the idea delighted me. So I instantly said, yes. Uh, I don't play the piano, but I made motions. Thank God the camera's eye was not on my hands. Otto told me a thing or two to do, and I followed his direction, as a good actor should, and as I expect all good actors to behave under my jurisdiction. I felt uh, that I was, uh, I was uh, setting rather a precedent. If I didn't behave as an actor, then I shouldn't expect any actor to behave well for me. I just learned my lines and said them as best I could. Of course, we've never had a priest working with the Mafia before, but I suppose during your stay in Rome you made many interesting contacts. Well, I had no choice, Your Eminence. I had to work my way through the seminary selling opium in St. Peter's Square. You're not afraid of me, are you? No. Well, why not? Most people are. Maybe it's because you remind me of my father. He's a lucky man to have a son who's not afraid of him. Quincy, Massachusetts. The Cardinal Company arrives on location as the first snowstorm in three weeks begins. Nature obediently follows the script, which calls for a barren New England village caught in the icy grip of winter. No real village could be found that looks shabby enough. One has to be built from scratch. But the extras are genuine residents of the area. They fit the scene and give the makeshift village a lived-in quality, an air of authenticity. I'll always try to find a path for Burgess Meredith in my films. He's a strong and very versatile actor. Burgess has often played the devil. Now I asked him to play a kind of saint. In the role of Father Halley, he must express the power of a man's faith in God, a faith which sustains him despite ill health and the conscience troubled by past failure. His eminence mustn't know, he mustn't know that I'm sick. Cardinal Glennon? Why not? Well, you see, he gave me my first parish. St. Anselm's in Stowe. It was a small church with a big mortgage. And I... I couldn't lift it. And he sent me to Needham. It was a prosperous parish. There was money in the bank. And I ran Needham into debt. He learns the value of humility. His spiritual education advances another step. A tawdry Boston dance hall, unused for many years, is restored to its former gaudy splendor by the Cardinal crew. Local girls, among them airline stewardesses, waitresses and dancers, pour onto the set. Hired as extras, they find themselves decked in plumed and spangled luxury and told to imagine themselves as taxi dancers of the Roaring Twenties. Carol Lindley must now project a sharp change in her screen character. In the story, several years have passed since her last scene. She must now show the effect of these years, as Mona becomes an embittered and morally corrupt young woman. Mona's story reaches a tragic climax in a Boston hospital. If she is to give birth to her illegitimate child, she will die. Her life can only be saved if her unborn child is sacrificed. Even though Stephen can spare his sister's life, his faith decrees that he must not interfere. He must let God's will be done. Up the 
Altissimum et Omne Donum Perfectum, totiusque decoris ornamentum, benedicere et santificare dignare anche... I saw the rise of Stephen Vermoyle to a position of eminence in the Church as a summation of his life's experience. I saw his life as a long adventurous journey with moments of profound doubt, temptation and despair. His faith was tried and tempered by worldly experience. I saw the Church as an organization of men bound together by their faith. It has endured because it is strong and strict, yet flexible enough to hold restless searching spirits like Stephen Vermoyle. December 11, 1963, Mr. and Mrs. Otto Preminger ride to the world premiere of The Cardinal, climaxing grueling months of editing and dubbing. It's a gay and glamorous occasion with all the trimmings. Leading citizens turn out to shake the producer's hand. Good Cardinal Cushing of Boston is sponsoring the premiere and delivers a welcoming speech. I have come here to tell you that I am grateful to our But when the fanfare is over, there comes a moment of special significance for producer director Otto Preminger. <laughs> For three years, the Cardinal has been my life. First an idea, then work. Lots of stimulating, exciting work which I enjoyed very much. Now it doesn't belong to me anymore. Now the Cardinal belongs to the audiences around the world. They will decide its future. Hollywood and the Stars, Hollywood goes to war. An unusual blend of grease paint and gunpowder, of GIs and glamour, from the bond selling circuit to the foxhole circuit. Nothing to it. My hand just burned off. <laughs> Are we winning? Hollywood goes to war. Next on Hollywood and the Stars.